All right, we got almost quarter after 10 on a Friday night, and I have six verses to cover. Let's do this. We got another uh, short Gospel of Mark special. And we talked last week, or maybe that was the week before. No, it was last week. We talked about how Mark is the, the one who has uh, just breathless enthusiasm. He covers the story. He's in and out, and he's on to the next thing. So, um, again, a short story to work with. Your Sunday school kids can uh, read this one. If you're teaching the older grades, they read this one out loud. You could read this three, four times and possibly find something different each time you read it. Um, if you got time today uh, or, you know, in the next 24 hours as you get this video, uh, read Jonah chapter one. Really fascinating to contrast what happens in Jonah chapter 1 with what happens here in Mark chapter 4. Absolutely fascinating, but that's kind of a kind of an aside. You don't necessarily need to, to cover that to get to the heart of what this is about in the Gospel of Mark. So we have a story with the disciples out on the boat. Uh, sea of Galilee is uh, the most um, a likely scenario for this, and they had some wicked storms. The meteorological phenomena in Galilee, you had this weird kind of situation where you had, and I'm not an expert in weather by any means, but I do know when you have different elevations, like um, weather patterns from different elevations clashing into each other, you get some sudden and nasty stuff. You can Google it if you want to know more. Google weather in the Sea of Galilee if you want uh, the enrichment information about that. But um, so experienced sailors could set out on the Sea of Galilee and be doing just fine one minute, and the next thing they know, they are literally struggling for their lives. So then that's actually what they are, what they think they're doing. But all the time, Jesus is in the boat just having a, a nice nap. And, um, yeah, it's kind of funny. This is Jesus' command here that gets them on the, on the water in the first place. He says, in verse 35, let us go across to the other side. Do you think he knew what would happen? <laughs> yeah, Jesus knew what was going to transpire. <clears throat> he, he was leading them into this storm. Why would he do that? Yeah, we, we've, we've talked over the last few years. Jesus messes with people, but he does it for the right reasons. He wants to teach them something. This is a teachable moment. Yeah, they're going through great peril and great fear, but, you know, they come out better for it. Actually, they come out even more afraid, but we'll get to that. <laughs> the point is Jesus is up to something here in order to teach them something, and what he is teaching them is who he is. That he is, well, of course, the Son of God, because the Son of God is the only one who can control the weather. <laughs> Except, um, was it always like that? And here I'm going to kind of take some baseless speculation here, somewhat based on some other commentators I've heard and read. When Adam and Eve were created, and the, the crown of creation, God said to them what? You have dominion over creation. Adam and Eve actually, I mean, they were in charge. Could they control the weather like Storm and X-Men? I don't know. But they did have dominion over the elements um, in some form that we don't today. And Jesus is son of God, but he is also son of man. And in particular, the perfect son of man, the second Adam, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the perfected human being. And so when he calmed the winds and the waves, was it only a son of God or... Could he also have been showing what it means to be the, the man that God intended Adam to be? Well, the, again, that's a little bit of speculation, but in any event, the disciples are pretty freaked out, right? You know, they, they, <coughs> they go from um, fear to kind of indignation. They're kind of upset with Jesus, like, don't you care? And Jesus just gets up, and if you've got one of these, the red letter Bibles, Peace, be still. Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? <laughs> and then that's the extent of Jesus' words in, in this passage. And they all are meaningful words. Peace, be still. He's saying that to the wind and the waves, right? 
Could it be he's saying this to his disciples as well? I, I think so. There's this wonderful double double meaning here. As he rebukes the wind and the sea and tells them to have peace and be still. But also telling these like upset disciples, relax guys, have peace. It's going to be okay. Then he asks them a rhetorical question. Why are you so afraid? Well, because we were in a storm that you know would, <laughs> has been known. Storms like this have been known to kill people. That's why we're afraid, but but Jesus challenges that. He said, well, well, why are you so afraid? You got me in the boat. Guys, <laughs> I am, you, you know who I am, right? Well, actually, they didn't at this point. They, they knew he was special, <laughs> but they didn't know how special. And then his other rhetorical question, have you still no faith? <clears throat> and then they end more afraid than they were during the storm. And this is also the case in Jonah chapter 1. It's really kind of fascinating here. You know, we, we can be in scary situations in our life. <clears throat> but you know what's even scarier than a life or death situation is an encounter with a supernatural phenomena, an encounter with God himself. Yeah, the 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 scary the the winds and the waves was scary, but that was because they thought they were gonna die. But at least it kind of fit in the realm of their understanding. <laughs> you know, it fit in with their lived experience to that point. But when a man speaks and the winds and the waves obey him, this is so far outside the realm of their lived experience that they just they they don't know how to process this. They don't know what to do with it, and in fact, it leads them to great fear because they are in the company of somebody who's more powerful than the very elements of, of nature. And what, what, is this, uh, what is this man's relationship to us? Yeah, this is Mark chapter 4. They're still figuring this out. This man who has such power in his command, you know, how, how do we relate to him? You know, they will come to understand the good news that he regards them as a brother, that he is their brother, that... Uh, that they are of the same family and that they don't need to be afraid of anything because <laughs> Jesus is their brother. So, all right, well, let's talk a little bit about the allegory or the metaphor here. You know, sometimes, you know, there, we can do too much allegorizing of Scripture, trying to um, take a Bible passage and say, well, this means, this must mean this. Um, in this case, this does seem to be, it, we're, I think, on pretty solid ground when we see this as a metaphor here for our lives, that we do find ourselves full of anxiety, we find ourselves tossed by the winds and the waves, we find ourselves fearful over what's going to happen, we find ourselves perhaps resentful that God is allowing certain things to happen. We ask, Jesus, don't you care? We wonder if God is asleep on us. And how many times in these moments of um, tribulation, testing in our lives, is maybe Jesus up to something in order to teach us something, and in particular to teach us to have faith in him? And so to have faith that uh, we're going to be okay. Come what may, we're going to make it uh, safely through this storm and the next and the one after that. And even the storms that can claim our lives, hey, we have a Savior who rebukes the winds and the waves. And not only that, we have a Savior who rebuked death. And this is where, where this is all heading, the Savior who speaks to the winds and the wave, <coughs> to the elements, is also a Savior who came out the other side of the grave. And with that in mind, we don't need to fear anything. Have faith. We've got a Savior who rose from the dead. All right, so um, what does the story tell us about who we are as God's people? Yeah, again, the disciples in this story didn't actually know. They didn't know they're standing with Jesus. Now we have the benefit with all of Scripture to realize that uh, he is in the same boat with us. He chose to enter into our boat. And even when it looks like he's a sleeper, that he doesn't care, in fact, he's, he's going to work things out to the good for us because he loves us. What does the story tell us about God and his mercies? We have a God who's all-powerful, and he's not afraid to use that power. 
in order to benefit us. And what does the story tell us about how we should live as God's people, live as salt and light in the world? Well, to be fearless, to go through life confident that we are going to be okay, to trust in Jesus during the storms, to acknowledge that he does have power and authority over everything, and in light of that, we will fear absolutely nothing. Interesting how this text also ties in a little bit to um, what we were doing on Sunday, what we, the, the story we started last week, which we will bring to a completion in this Sunday's worship service, the story of the shipwreck of the Apostle Paul, <coughs> his uh, turbulent trip in the Mediterranean Sea, and his eventual shipwreck, but also eventual salvation as uh, he makes it to the island of Malta. So you'll have a chance in your Sunday school lesson to kind of reference some of the stuff that uh, we've been covering in that chapter in the book of Acts in our Sunday worship. Well, yeah, short video this week. Yeah, there's a, a boxing match going to start here, so I, I better wrap this up. God's blessings on your preparations this weekend.